These women enjoy preparing meals together. Despite their burden, some of them even manage to smile. Several hundred displaced Nigerians live in this camp. A local church provides them with shelter. How many times we have had uh, deliveries here? Six deliveries here. Wow. Uh, IDP children were born here safely. We are in Yola, the capital of Adamawa, one of the three states most badly hit by Boko Haram. Up to 400,000 people took refuge in the city's camps. The population has more than doubled recently. Many of the women you see here are widows. Their husbands have been killed, and the grown-up children who are boys have also been killed. Yeah. For this priest, humanitarian aid has become a full-time job. He hears stories of broken lives all day long. This woman lost her husband and three sons, assassinated by Boko Haram Islamists. She tried to flee her village in the north of Adamawa, but she got caught. Thank God I was able to speak a few words of Arabic. Then their emir said, we will not put you in jail. Get into the vehicle and come with us. And they took me back to my village. We really suffered. From six in the morning to midday, we had to gather at the preaching ground. After that, we had to prepare lunch. But we weren't even allowed to eat. Like many here, she was able to escape during the recent fighting. Assisted by neighboring countries, the Nigerian army launched a major offensive against Boko Haram in early 2015. But the war is far from over. Even here in Yola, security is no longer guaranteed. On the 4th of June, a suicide attack killed at least 31 people at this market in the city center. Some signs of the explosion are still visible. Two men are on the ground. Two are here. One is on the other side. I have to remove the other corpse before I carry my, my goods in. The shopkeepers are still repairing the damage and trying to overcome their fear. It's the first such attack in this town. I pray that such will not happen in the future. That's my prayer, my daily prayer, that such will never happen again in, in Yaula. Elected in March, the new president, Muhammadu Buhari, promised a victory against Boko Haram. During his inauguration, he made a shock announcement. The command center for the military operations against the insurgency was to be moved to Maiduguri. The capital of Borno state is also the birthplace of the insurgency. We head to the federal capital, Abuja. The new president also promised to do all he could to release the Chibok schoolgirls who were abducted in 2014. More than 200 of them are still being held by Boko Haram. Their families can count on these militant support. They gather every single day in downtown Abuja. Any conversation that the, this particular new administration will turn a leaf different from what we saw in the past. We're not going to surrender. We're going to just keep demanding. It is the responsibility of our government to take care of citizen security, and we're going to hold them to it. The Chibok girls have become a symbol. Their ordeal shocked the world. We met with one of the desperate families in the suburbs of Abuja. She's in the final, so her father wants to do a graduation calendar for her. So that was the day she sent this picture to us. But unfortunately, that was the last goodbye. I had from my baby up to today. <laughs> the insurgents claimed the teenagers were forced to convert to Islam and married off to fighters. Oh, what I want is my baby. I don't care about pregnancy, diseases. Or whatever. According to Amnesty International, at least 2,000 women have been kidnapped by Boko Haram since 2014.